So we're in Tonga, an extremely remote island nation in the South Pacific. And more specifically, we're anchored out near one of the 55 tiny islands in the Vava'u group. And we're sort of stuck here because while we're waiting out cyclone season and a pandemic, which has given us a lot of time to make new friends. And we're excited to introduce you to two of them today. They're a couple of sailors who rocked up here many years ago. And what I assume is a similar spirit to when the first Polynesians arrived with no real expectations or plans, just an endless sea of possibilities. And before we head over, I just want to note that it did take some convincing because, well, publicizing your life on the internet isn't exactly on everybody's bucket list, but we're glad that they agreed. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy the story. Sunrise. What a beautiful morning. Okay. Time for a little coffee. Beautiful morning. <laughs> so. Look at this, no more rain, no wind. It is a spectacularly beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, coming to work. here is just kind of figuring out you know by trial yeah. and error making a plan and just seeing yeah, what happens yeah not a lot of uh not a lot of youtube videos for uh a ramp you know <laughs> a ramp with a four foot tide yeah. with cyclones and uh <laughs> shallow water yeah earthquake. Did you guys feel that, earthquake? <laughs> that earthquake a couple nights ago we had a big old good, earthquake huh? man geez yeah so this is real island life always repairing much like boat life just uh on land. Yeah. yeah. Yep. This is a sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> no Just sailboat. permanently anchored. Yeah. Yeah. With no sails. It has coconut trees instead of sails. Yes. Yeah. So this is uh this is Ben, but of course we've caught him in the middle of trying to finish repairing his uh dock. We just had a cyclone not too long ago, and so this is the reality of what you have to do afterwards. Shall we go up and say hello to Lisa? Let's do it. So welcome to Mandala Resort. And into the jungle. Build this up. I promise we hide. They're making sure now. We're here. We're here, we're here. <laughs> we're here. We're here, smell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's meet Ben and Lisa. Hello. Yes. So, fellow cruisers came here how long ago? 2004. Four. Yeah. yeah. You were 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we swam here as children. <laughs> Olympic swimmers, clearly. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. So, came here in 2004 from California, mm. but it was a very long route here. A few years of cruising. Yeah. yeah, and awesome. tell us about your boat. She's a 42-foot pilot house sloop. It's a Cooper, it's a Cooper. Canadian built boat, which is now the U.S. yacht. Yeah. They're still around, yeah. It's a 1980 yeah. older boat, but took care of us. She, we still have her. Yeah. yeah. Nice beamy boat. She rode the seeds really well mm -hmm. and took very good care of us. The story evolves from there, because not only did you arrive, but you got here, then you loved it, decided to start a little, like, Wi-Fi cafe, first internet. Um... Well, actually, we put Zor balls and rolled people down a hill in these big inflatable <laughs> balls. 
uh, for a while because you know that's what Sound, we do. Sounds very flaming lips, actually. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was not smart, actually. But, um, <laughs> did but you really do that? We yeah. did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought so you we had a, a hillside, and um, it's a long story. From my previous, we did extreme sports and stuff like that, and this was something left over from that world. Then we brought here and tried to make it go. It was Tonga Sphere, is what we were going to call it. Tonga Sphere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for a tourism thing to do. Do you have any photos of that? We do. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'd love to see one. Yeah. All right. So you started a <clears throat> spear. Sphere. 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 And <laughs> so you rolled people down a hill, yeah. and then you gave them internet. Yeah, we started a little coffee place, and then needed Wi-Fi, of course, and then we wanted to have that burger and beer and ice cream place, because what else do you want other we, than laundry? <laughs> yeah, we get, get off of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we just said, okay, we'll do all those things, tick all those boxes, and then it just evolved from there into a restaurant with the Wi-Fi, which you set up the first broadcast to the whole bay of yachts, right? Which yeah, I, I figured out how to take our landline and broadcast as wireless, and back then there were no smartphones, everybody came in with no laptops. No 3G, no 4G, no, no nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so they came there in was no cards cell phones and, here. It was yeah. just like yeah. a payphone at the mm. at the phone company. Yeah. <laughs> so we weren't real you know, focused on making the business be a great thing. It was just taking us over so we didn't tip mm. into our kitty, right? Yeah, and right, gave us something yeah. to do while we were here for the first few years. And we got to meet people and it was fun. Yeah. 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 So the resort's called Mandala, but mm. what's the name of the island again? It's Feitoko. Feitoko. Okay. F-E-T-O-K-O. -E okay. Feitoko Island. And how did you end up on the island? Because there was nothing here when you got here. Nothing. Right? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's a good question. Um, all right, so we befriended a local carver. Long story short, we partnered up with him and got the lease to the island. That took six years to get that to happen. Wow, okay. <laughs> six so we, years, okay. So we started a restaurant in the meantime, carts, so far as we could brought carts and took people on tours to the jungles and stuff like that. Just wanted to have fun. Have some yeah. fun. We ran a regatta here for five years um, with big full moon parties. And that funny, kind of I actually remember reading about that because like the only cruiser guides I've been able to find for here are older cruiser guides. Mm -hmm. But I remember reading about one of their regattas and, mm -hmm. and like the parties and stuff afterwards. Yeah, so, yeah, so we had fun. a lot of fun for a while and then, um, and then dumped any money that we had left into building this place and uh, with the intention of running it as a resort at, at some point. So we moved here from town. 2010? Yeah. yeah. And then built for a few years, and we didn't take any guests till late 2013. 13, we yeah, had yeah. one room. We had yeah. the tree house. It was yeah. our first. And the restaurant. And, and the, the restaurant. restaurant. And then, so we have like a four-month season. That's the peak of the tourist season yeah. here. Wales. And then, yeah, Wales. Exactly. And, and the great sailing as well. And so yeah. then... When the season starts to die down, we would be able to, you know, the guests would go and we would build the next room and just kind of kept carrying on that way throughout each year. So it was a long, slow process. process. Not, not the, not the smartest way to build a place, but... <laughs> no, we, it is and a labor of love as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. labor of love and still an evolution. Mm -hmm. Like, because, I mean, there's always new projects going on, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. it never ends. As soon as we get to one end, we have to go back and start, start, over. And start repairing from the other end. Yeah. Uh, the environment here is really harsh. Everything we took from boating and being cruisers and what we learned about the boat, we were able to apply. It's actually a big boat and how it, how it runs in the, in the technology. So it's uh, been a great learning experience for us and a lot of fun. You know? yeah. A lot of challenges as well, of yeah. course, along the way, but uh, fun too. If it was easy, yeah. everybody would do it. Yeah. That's it. Right? That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, so do you mind giving us a just a quick tour? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look around. Yeah. yeah. This is the restaurant. <laughs> we'll start um, right here. Yeah, so this was uh, 50,000 bags of concrete rock and sand, one over the shoulder, one on the arm, walked through the surf to get it to the beach in the beginning. And we wanted an outdoor, like when we cut everything back, right now everything's really grown in because we're in wet season. Yeah. And no tourist. So we just had to kind of go fair around <laughs> No tourist, here. wet season, and COVID. And COVID, yeah. There's, there hasn't been a guest here in... What, a over year? A year yeah, way too many counts against us at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, I won't bring that up again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got interested in patterns and chaos. It's a long story, but I like the Fibonacci sequence. is something used in art, and we use that in building a lot of our structures, but primarily this. So some of the arches and stuff, we're trying to use the curves we see in nature instead of right angles and that kind of thing. So Get build to blend in. Yeah, so this whole thing is poured concrete. So it was poured as a liquid and then solidified with steel and stuff inside. Mixed and by hand, no concrete trucks are coming here. Yeah. No, <laughs> right, yeah. So it was a crazy endeavor to try to do this thing. So this one didn't break us, so we were inspired to build a folly after that, a tree house. And then this blossom from there, now we have seven structures on the island, all of them different. Wow. Really quick for the people who don't know what Fibonacci is, mm. can you do a quick expl quick explanation? <laughs> quick is not usually Ben's thing, but we're gonna we're gonna give it. <laughs> yes, yeah, all right, yeah, okay. 
<laughs> Here we go. All right. So Fibonacci is represented in geometry with the golden spiral or the golden mean ratio. If you take a string of numbers from zero to infinity, you add the first two numbers to make the next. So zero and one make one, one and one make two, two and three make five, three and five make eight, so on to infinity. But it takes intelligence to make the computation. And then when you plot that string in geometry, it makes these this kind of spiraling out, you'll see it all over. There's evidence from quantum areas to galactic areas that, that these seemingly random mathematical occurrences seem to be prevalent in all, all areas of nature. And I wanted to build with it, right? Just to play with it. I, I like that concept. And it's not the only one that's out there, but it's one that at the time I could build with. Yeah, yeah. I could So it's sort of like, it's like finding patterns in nature, essentially, right? Yeah, for me, pattern recognizing is what makes us a special animal on the planet. And in the quest of finding truth and trying to fight, figure out what it's all about, I've landed on this crazy equation that I wanted to put my hand to. And hence the name mandala, uh, f because it's, it's structurally integral to what a mandala is. So that's why we named the place mandala as well. The structure, everything has kind of been made with that theory in mind, right? Yeah, every every structure. This one, you could see it more evident than the others, but even pathways and how we do things. Also the ethos of how we run the place and what we feel is a na us playing into nature mm -hmm. instead of being something sitting on top of it. But actually what nature is doing and trying to let ourselves get into that. Well, cool. Let's take a walk because yeah, I think cool. you'll see it a lot more as we as we go. But that's what I love about Mandala is it's a very like biophilic experience. All of the buildings and nature, it kind of it, everything is all one. It, it's not separate. So we're at the first tree house and we actually stayed in this tree house. We stayed here for Halloween because they invited us over for a Halloween party that they had here on the island. So we got to stay in this tree house because, well, the boat was still on the hard at the yard, <laughs> on the hard at the yard. This wasn't your first tree house, was it? No. No. This was actually going to be our place and we wanted to look in Mama Tree. That's Mama Tree. That's the heart yeah. of the island right there. All the other rooms look out. We wanted one that looked in to Mama Tree. So we built the deck looking at the tree. Looking at the tree. Yeah. So why a tree house? Tree houses are fun. <laughs> because why I'm not a tree house? I'm a guy. I yeah. needed to build a tree house. Yeah. And they're fun. They're fun to build everyone. Yeah. People respond to tree houses as well, you know. Yeah. If you're gonna come to a little island like this, you gotta at least uh, give a go at a tree house. Yeah. One thing we wanted to do from the outside, we didn't want to change the look of Feitoko as the island to the people. So our structures are very hidden. We didn't want a big restaurant that's pronounced out. We wanted nature to take it back over. So we're gonna train the vines to come up over and build it so that we don't need paint and things like that, that I always have to strip it down and do yeah. that. So we've built everything like this bamboo is called Kaho and it's from a whole nother part of the island that we had to go into make a deal with the people. And it's a weed to the Tongans and they're happy if we clear cut because they go back and they plant crops there. Yeah. Right? And usually they burn this. So it's all built framework around and then stretched around the top of that. And it gives the interior of the room a bigger feel than a straight wall. Yeah. And it looks really cool. And like you said, you don't need paint. Yeah, and even the areas that look like paint is just the mud mixed into the final rendering concrete, so we never have to paint those too. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, that's. Um, but that one's mildew. Really that's paint. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> mildew counts as the earth has taken it back. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's right. I love all the little details, like the hand collected shells that become the sink, or the rope for the toilet paper. The Tongans, they shuck these giant clams. So they shuck and take the meat. So some, and they've been doing it for eons. And some of these distant little islands, like we went the other day, had just piles of these under the ground that stuff oh, had fallen the, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd go out there and, and uh, I'd sail a little boat around for months and uh, dig them out and pull them out. And it lines up for restaurants and we use them for things like that. So they get some decorative use. Yeah. Little tokens from the past. This is Hopi. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. Weird, huh? <laughs> Reluctant love. Yeah. Come on, Hopi. Now we got the dogs and the cat. Because you have to have an island kitty. And how can you not have such a cute one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is your folly. This is your home. And do you move around the island or are you always in this room? We do move around. We need to be able to feel how the rooms feel and see what needs to be done, you know? And so we kind of cruise around when it's empty, when we don't have, 
when borders are closed, we don't have any <laughs> guests. guests. Yeah, you can yeah. just flip from one one room yeah. to the next. But last year we've had a lot of choices. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's like your backpackers on your mm-hmm. own island. It is. Yeah. It is yeah. <laughs> Way too much, actually. <laughs> yeah. They need to be lived in, though. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Any special details or anything? I think um, the ceiling. I love the ceiling. Well, it's a, uh, yeah. look. It's a it's a nine sided polygon, so it's called a nonagon. Nonagon. Yeah, That's and um, so some of the wood has been cut out of the forest here. Like this is called a uh, oh oh ohi ohia ohia from Hawaii that a guy had a container of that I. I bought, these are a fast growing wood that's around here. So we just tried different ideas again with the kaho on the ceiling and it's a passive solar. So there's a hole in the top of the ceiling. So when the wind, the idea is when the wind blows by, it uh, creates a venturi effect that'll take the heat out yep. and pull in the cool from the bottom. And, and these rooms stay quite cool. The summer months get quite hot here. So we wanted to keep that in mind. Also it's on the side of the island that gets hit pretty hard. There's four big pine trees that are just falling over. They dominoed here before we got here. So we built around those. They're still alive. Okay. Interesting. So, so we built around those as a wind block. So this side has been hit hard before. So we wanted something round, something. And so all the ties tie from the foundation all the way to the roof. To you know, you know, what do you tell us what you really think? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just do what the boss tells us. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted the tree houses. She did. She yes. <laughs> I think the neatest part about this resort is the fact that they built it themselves. Just the two of them, with obviously help from the locals, um, hiring help when needed, but they just kind of started one one dream of having a little tree house and it just sort of flowed into a folly and then another folly and then another tree house and now it's just this lovely organic resort that sort of just happened it's not that they had some sort of master plan it was just something that happened and i love that like the whole idea behind it just letting nature take its course and seeing what happens Okay, so this is the first tree house you ever built. Yeah, so yeah. We, yeah, we built this first and we were kind of figuring it out as we went and <laughs> we've had to go back and fix the things we didn't know. <laughs> but we wanted, um, as you can see behind me, this is a gorgeous area. The islands that are just out on the other side are right on the Tonga Trench, which is the second deepest in the world. And it's a massive chasm in the earth that spans from New Zealand all the way up to Samoa. Like 500 miles or something, right? I think it's more Longer like, than yeah, that. Even longer. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. So it's bigger than the Himalayas, but you can't see it because it's underwater. But if you were in the Himalayas, the peaks would be Everest. And so those would be the peaks right there. Those are literally the edge of the earth, the tip of them, right? And we're just a mile from that. And the International Dateline runs down that trench between Samoa, you know, all the way up the, the earth. So we are literally the east side of Avao, the easternmost point of Tonga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we're seeing the first of a day in the world. Because even so. Samoa is um, yesterday. Samoa is yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's on the other so side. Weird. It's weird, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you are the first sunrise of the day, and that's what this treehouse sees. So your yeah. view from this treehouse is the first light of every day. That's yeah. So right. we wanted to build a treehouse that you know played into that a bit, so you could watch the sunrise and, and uh, look right out across that area. Look at that. The showers. The showers are definitely my favorite just because of the open air, the views. You get to shower in the jungle, but not actually in the jungle. And this breeze as well, there's there's no humans in between here and the Antarctic where the air is kind of cleaned by that whole kind of earth system you know and so this is the freshest air on the planet and it's just beautiful breeze from the southeast prevailing and it's just lovely up here yeah the southeast trade winds that blew us here are created by the arctic jet is what lisa was talking about and so literally there's no continent there's just open ocean to a southeast trade to no humans so we're the first to uh put our breath into it so we get the really fresh air from southeast so lisa's actually 150 years old it's just that it's the air and the light 
It is. It makes yeah. me look yeah. eternally yeah. 29. <laughs> and if you, if you come here, you will get younger. Right? And well, that's that's in our marketing. That's in our marketing. One more time on that one. Yeah. Come to Mandala where you get younger. <laughs> And more broken. I actually broke my heels when I when I built this. I fell off of it. Your actual heel. Uh, both. Both heels. Yeah, both my heels. I fell off that platform and hit a. Uh, we have composting septic systems here, so I hit it, and um, that was our first year of operation. So I had to hobble out around on crushes through that one. That was fun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Talk about an initiation. Hmm. Yeah. So this one is, it's not the Hobbit house, but it's no. kind of inspired by a Hobbit house? Yeah, kind of. It's, and manta rays. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was inspired. I wanted to build something unique that hasn't been done here before. But also on this side of the island, it's closer to the edge. There's no beach on this side, so I needed something strong. So this thing is built underground. And we dug a notch into the side of the island, but I wanted a manta ray. I'm passionate about manta rays, and I wanted to have my own homage to the manta ray. And it's hard to see now because it's grown up in this time of the year. But um, this will all get backfilled to where when we're finished, this will just look like a bump on the edge of the island. Right now, it's just a passion fruit that's taken over here. But it's um, going to be like a, a living roof. Yeah, so we have a few living roofs on the island, but this one will be living roof right up to the edge. Uh, so you wouldn't see it from this side at all, except the stairs going down to it. And then I'll show you the inside. It's like a, it's like a little rabbit hole. Like yeah. it's hidden. Yes. And we'll swale the dirt so it looks a bit like a tail, but you won't be able to tell because I don't. You know, we don't want it cheesy, but we want it to look like a mantis. So the wing is there, but there's no tail. So the He'll be into the into the dirt and the grass will go up over that. Yeah. Cool. We'll know it's there anyway. You'll know yeah. it. Can't see it. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's it's the little like hidden treasures. Almost just put a ladder up. <laughs> you don't even need to go snorkeling. You just look down. Yeah. 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 Amazing when we see you sitting on these, but yeah, one on one, just so it's right off right off the side. Tell us about this one. All right. So this is the inside of the work in progress of the hobbity house I showed you on the backside. <laughs> so this is all poured concrete like the kitchen and restaurant area is. Obviously, it's a work in progress. We have a lot to do here, but we're pretty close. Yeah. So this is it. So you got the bed looking right out yeah. to, the, to the east. And if I stand here, I'm underground. There is no bad view. No. no. <laughs> you know, like that's the thing. It doesn't matter where you are, what room you're in, you have an epic view and you got a really cool room. Mm. I'll move in. I'll take it. Thank you. Take it. Going back to the fact that this is essentially a boat. Yeah. So th <laughs> this would be your engine room for the island, right? So and a total disarray of my mess <laughs> and tools. Uh, anyway, this is what we build the island out of and also our power hub. The roof of this building holds seven kilowatts of solar, trickling into 36 kilowatts of batteries, but they're lead acid, so you can only use half of that. So yeah. we run the island on 18 kilowatts of batteries. And around here, the solar is usually topped up on a normal day without all the rain we've been having, but on a sunny day, we are topped up by 11 noon, something like that. And then the rest of the energy that can't be stored anymore for nighttime use is diverted to a water maker and it runs at uh, 280 liters an hour. We can sometimes, you know, depending on the day, we can get 2,000 liters a day of, of water. Uh, gallons divided by four. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. This is the water maker. It's a uh, Ecotech uh, water maker. It's the same one we have on our yacht. So we can interchangeable yeah. parts. Yeah. So basically you just um, click on one, one brings up out of a pump down on the, on, at the ocean pumps it up uh, underground, comes into here, and brings salt water through pre-filtering to the main pump, which charges up to 800 PSI, and uh, fresh water separates from the saline, and the salty water goes back over the side, back into the sea. And that's it, and that all that's all running off the, off the sun right now. Do you capture rainwater as well? I do, yeah. Two roofs capture rainwater, and we have some tanks right behind you. We have about 50,000 liters. Ooh of storage. Yeah, it's so, more than enough for this. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. water maker just stays on top of it, so if there's ever a problem with either the power or this. Or rain, because it's not yeah. always the rainy season. Yeah, and it's all 110. It's a outback system, which I love. They've been great. The solar trickles down to solar controllers, fills the batteries, and then the inverters invert back to the ion. Pretty simple. We run 110 energy out to the follies, but then we transform them 
uh, with transformers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we transform them back to 12 volt, so all the lights are LED 12 volt, and um, and we can run each Fale with a car battery. So wow. there's boat pumps there for water pumps, and it's gravity fed to them. And then so if we ever have a problem out here, we can't run to the store, we can't. And you don't anything. have to turn on a generator, which is really awesome. We don't have to turn a generator on. We do have backup generators. Right. But if necessary. You, yeah. But we can buy these car batteries here. So we can run a Fale for a couple of weeks on a car battery. So we've focused on low amp use mm -hmm. when building the place, not just, you know, a massive array and that kind of thing. So we only put in what we need for it. It's worked out so uh, pretty good so far. We're able to run a commercial kitchen and, and with freezers and fridges and all that. And it works out. Pretty amazing. Ben mentioned it's the same water maker that's on their boat, but he's not talking about their monohull. They actually have a big catamaran out there. It's a, what, 60? Ask him. Text on screen. <laughs> they have a big catamaran, which is part of trade winds because they have kind of a, a little deal with trade winds. So you can come and you do part of your time on the boat and you do part of your time on the island which means you get to get out you go sailing you see loads on the island and it's definitely whenever you non-covid times if you were to come here this place would be pumping because there would be guests coming through and people are going on adventures every single day i mean it's really yeah it's a thing it's like it sounds it's this, like the it's, dream a few yeah days on a boat and a few days on an island exactly yeah, yeah. it's like if you are not looking to just simply sit around on a beach all day on which is totally fine but if you're like the adventure traveler and you want to go and see and do an experience it's quite the package like it's, it's pretty cool if you're still watching you might be thinking what a fantastically curious island and couple of humans and naturally when such curious people head out to explore their backyard well they do that a little differently too but we'll save that story for next week. Here she comes. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. I got the wide lens, you gotta come closer. Okay. I'll circle around and come back. Okay.